Welcome. This is a video presentation of the paper, The Hubble Constant is a Measure of the Increase in the Energy of the Universe. What if space was not a vacuum, but actually existed, composed of discrete units, atoms of space? Fundamental here is the idea that atoms of space take up space. Expansion implies the addition of more atoms of space, but the universe is already full of space. So we have a problem. Where is there room for the additional atoms of space? If the universe was an expanding 3D sphere, in the sense that we are within the 3D volume, then only the atoms of space at the 2D surface of the sphere would touch the nothingness into which space is expanding, and this does not work. A 3D sphere has a two-dimensional surface area. Let's take a cross-section and look inside. This drawing is certainly not to scale, as the number of atoms of space lying along the diameter would be almost unthinkably large their size being very small, and the observable universe being very large, with a radius of over 92 billion light-years. If the universe was an expanding 3D sphere, and the universe was full of atoms of space, we'd have great difficulty in adding more. There are a lot of atoms of space that have to move over and make room for the new. Only those atoms of space near the edge would be able to find room. Additionally, a 3D sphere gives major issues with the cosmological principle, which states that space looks roughly the same from all points. Those galaxies near the edge would see a lopsided distribution of galaxies compared to those more centrally located. The universe as a three-dimensional surface volume of a four-dimensional sphere solves these problems. In this diagram, we have reduced a four-dimensional sphere to a two-dimensional view, and the blue represents the 3D surface volume. The center of the hyperverse is hollow and must be for the same reasons given why a 3D sphere cannot be the universe. The hyperverse model solves these problems. It allows the addition of atoms of space without crowding restraints, allows abidance to the cosmological principle, and gives a positively curved, closed, and finite universe. But wait, there is more. If the universe is the surface volume of a four-dimensional hypersphere, how big is it? That is, what is the radius of the hyperverse? We're going to use the standard equations for the volume of a 3D sphere and the surface volume of a 4D sphere. 3D sphere is given by this. The surface volume of 4D sphere is equal to that. We're going to set these two volumes equal and solve for the radius of the hyperverse. Doing the math tells us that the radius of the hyperverse is equal to the cube root of 2 over 3 pi times the radius of the observable universe. The radius of the observable universe is equal approximately to 46.25 billion light years. We can take this value and plug it into the equation. The hyperverse radius comes to 27.58659 billion light years. So how fast is it expanding? To see how fast the hyperverse is expanding, we will divide the radius of the hyperverse by the age or time that it has been expanding. And the result is 1.999 light years per year. Light travels one light year in a year. The hyperverse radius is expanding at two light years per year. That means the hyperverse is expanding at twice the speed of light, or 2c. Every point in the universe is on the surface of the hyperverse, and therefore every point in space is expanding into the fourth dimension at twice the speed of light. You, I, everything, everywhere is advancing radially at 2C. Consider that in two seconds, light could travel more than one and a half times the distance to the moon. In just one second, we have traveled that far into the fourth dimension. We are where we are at for the most tiniest of a moment. Can we feel this? Yes. This is the basis of time. Notice, too, that the speed of light is a function of the rate of radial expansion. Light only moves within the universe, or surface of the hyperverse. We have two radial steps for every step that light takes within the universe. It's two up and one over. The 2C expansion rate is not a violation of relativity. Relativity applies to motion within the universe. What we're talking about here is motion of the entire universe. Let's look at how fast the circumference of the observable hyperverse is growing. 
The rate of change of the circumference as a function of the radius is 2 pi. Rearranging, we find that delta C sub h is 2 pi times delta RH, but we know that the rate of change of the radius is 2C. Substituting that in gives us 2 pi times 2C. Dividing delta C sub H by the circumference of the hyperverse gives us the rate of change of the circumference for each point on the circumference. The result is astounding. 2C over R sub H. It's the Hubble constant. And that is the value it should be if the universe were indeed the surface volume of the hyperverse. We've seen the radial expansion is 2c. The circumferential expansion equals the Hubble constant. These are amazing results and are not coincidences. Let's look at the mass of the observable universe. For reasons given in the paper, it appears Fred Hoyle's mass calculation is the correct mass of the universe. His value was the speed of light cubed divided by 2 times the gravitational constant times the Hubble constant. We're going to use our value for the Hubble constant and insert it into his equation. We find that the mass of the universe in hyperverse terms is r sub h times c squared over 4g. If we take the rate of change of the mass of the universe as a function of the radius of the hyperverse, we get c squared over 4g. Rearranging the equation, we find that delta m sub o is equal to c squared over 4g times delta rh, but we know that delta rh is 2c, and we find c cubed over 2g. Taking delta m sub o divided by the mass of the observable universe gives us again 2c over rh, the Hubble constant. For mass energy equivalence, we find that delta E sub O divided by E sub O is equal to the Hubble constant. The Hubble constant is an energy equation. This might seem odd because the way the Hubble constant is used is as a measure of the recession rate of galaxies from one another. Typical value might be 21.6 kilometers per second per million light years of separation. However, the Hubble constant is expressed in terms of distance per time per distance, and the distances cancel out. And the Hubble constant at its core is a dimensionless number per unit time. We can do a little math. Using our version of the Hubble constant, plugging in the values, we find that the Hubble constant is equal to 2.285 times 10 to the minus 18th per second. And we can just as easily, instead of using meters, use joules per second per joule times the age of the universe, and we find the same value we'd get if we used meters. The hyperverse surface volume is energy. The universe is energy. The surface of the hyperverse is composed of energy as it must be. There has to be something there to distinguish it from the nothingness into which the hyperverse is expanding. So far, the hyperverse model has given us a positively curved, closed, and finite universe. Room for the addition of more atoms of space. Compliance with the cosmological principle. A radial expansion of 2c. A basis of time. A circumferential expansion equal to the Hubble constant. And it tells us the universe is composed of energy. We've not talked about spin yet. That topic comes up in the paper about time.